Welcome to our work in progress. With our bulkhead, patio, and hardscape complete, we're now ready to take this project all the way and finish it. We're going to provide the homeowners with an elegant setting here. In other words, a designer's landscape. Friends, you can see behind me here all the hard work that's been completed to this point. And as we take you back, we're going to really talk about the problems that we've solved. Here's our problem. Due to the floor grade, the homeowners were actually left with this steep hill falling right out of their back screen porch. The only way to increase the living space or outdoor area was to bring in a bulkhead and to fill it. So we did this in order to do a multi-level terracing with a wood bulkhead. Then dirt was backfilled and packed in order to solidify this new outdoor surface. Next, we wanted to introduce some concrete segmental retaining wall product with stairs as well as some papers. So this worked in conjunction, installing the wall to give us that upper terrace or landing coming out the door, the steps to transition us down to this now beautiful patio. When the bulkhead was left, we had square, boxy, kind of rectangular situation to deal with working around the existing palm. But now with the radiuses, the accent of the wall, the curves of the step, and the curved patio, we feel like we can soften this stiff, boxy look in order to create for them a wonderful place to hang out both day and night to enjoy this wonderful marsh view. So now you see this beautiful setting we have to work with. What a change, what a transition from the short little hill that was here previously. Do you notice some of the yellow flags? Well, we've run irrigation and some sleeving underneath here for uh, landscape lighting as well. It's kind of unfair for designers because on this part, we sat back and watched the contractor install. But I can't help but think be impressed by the fact that these curves, the radius of the patio, and the curves of the step and wall are very complementary. They work together. We're rounding off some of these corners that we mentioned. This is the part where we plan to stop our hardscape and begin somewhat of a natural little uh, creeper crawl through here. And at the homeowner's request, we are going to expand this patio or decking or pavers, if you will, and continue it, picking up this line where we are, coming towards you, Then the other side will come out here and somewhat move along the wall. So we've got a little bit of a, a thin stretch here, enough for just a little bit of planting. What we had is about 40 inches in here. So a little bit three plus feet. And what I like about this, this little pad, notice how we've knocked it or bumped it into the wall here. So we don't need furniture. This is another little bench, if you will, acting as the wall. Softening material here, down here, left and right. Now we have some patio trees to install and we wanna use some against the house because we need some height there. But I wanna try to create that triangle, that asymmetrical balance. So I feel like we might could place one of those specimens right there. So let's install our evergreen patio trees. Number one goes out by the bulkhead. They're in place. Our second tree placed closer to the house, the left side of the door installed. And finally, the third tree close to you goes toward the corner of the screen enclosure on the upper deck of the bulkhead. Three trees to create a nice triangle 
of asymmetrical balance. So with our trees installed, you'll be able now to enjoy what the homeowners will get to enjoy, and that is from the upper landing, one, two, three specimens. Now, won't they look good when we light them? No doubt. You may note some of the plants that we have in the background then that we brought in. We'll discuss those in a moment, but really we should spend time and talk about the specimens that we used here. Eliocarpus decipiens. This evergreen tree is so handsomely shaped, it grows to 30 to 35 foot, maybe 40 foot tall, but that's not the application here. It adapts so well to pruning that these can be sheared back, topped, and really kept to any desired height. That's why we call them the patio tree for a patio setting. We don't want it to get too terribly tall. It has a white flower in the spring, but really a beautiful, handsome shape, a nice straight trunk. We've got two, two and a half inches of canopy or caliper there. And so, um, again, I love the fact that these have gone in. Now, with this tree, you notice it might have been a little top heavy because the heads were so big. This is the way I like to stake. Rather than put wire and, and stakes in the ground that are somewhat dangerous, we take a steel rod and drive it through the root ball. So we actually pin the tree or the root ball tree to the ground and then taking it another several feet down. So we have a 10 foot stake and then we tie it off here and again up top so that it secures it from moving. I guarantee these will not blow over. You can't blow over a stake like that. It's tough in the ground. Now let's go talk about some of the plant varieties we'll install today. And now I've arranged things so that we can see the difference of color in the foliage, but also from the tallest to the lowest growing varieties. We're stepping up a little bit. And really, let's begin with the sago palm. Uh, this is called, or commonly as a sago palm, but it's a cycad, Cycus revoluta. And these are used in the southern part of the states, really for accent plants, and I like to group them. And so like these smaller ones, they come a little bit larger than this, but this will make a nice size to go in and mature with time. Pretty low maintenance as it goes. Green, dependable, year round, and again it gives you a little bit of the beachy tropical feel kind of that we have here on the marsh. For color, the Laura Petalum. Now there are many varieties of Laura Petalum, and so this is one that again gives us this beautiful maroon or burgundy flush of growth several times a year. It does have the tendency to get a little leggy or spaghetti, if you will. So it needs to be tipped, but that new growth always looks good. Look at the contrast between the Aztec grass and the Laura Petalum. These two could work together in a grouping or to be utilized in a planting. We have a dark patio, so that dark setting could be set, but, but look here how the light color will go good with the, the border or the trim of the deck here. Stepping down again, Nandina Harbor Dwarf. This is a beautiful specimen. I like in the fall you do get a little bit of color in the venation and some of the leaves, but again it has a bluish green color, not really a true green, and it stays very low. As you look at the specs on this, we can use this around the patio knowing that it's going to stay as a ground cover. Very low and dependable color year-round. If we move closer to you with Juniperus horizontalis, horizontalis, meaning that it grows in a horizontal shape on the ground. This is Procumbens juniper, commonly known. And a bluish green cast or color, dependable year round again. These don't get tall at all, as you can tell, but we can depend these to kind of grow and rug together and mass. And also, this contrast will work well with the color of the patio. So as we use these and some other varieties, we'll look forward to mixing things up, if you will. So where did you begin planting or installing? Should we start here at the deck, down lower, or up closer to the home? Well, does it really matter? There is one thing we want to do here. Remember the, the extension of the pavers and hardscape are going to enter into the wall. And I've come up with a little configuration for our sod. We've got a big slope here and sod is really going to help prevent erosion, well, really more than anything. But we have this tree. I was wondering, could we fit it inside a bed or is it actually going to be detached and separate? 
We'll bring our side line, I'll come towards you. We'll curve up. We want these uh, also to be easy to mow. So we don't want to create a lot of corners here. So you see the flow kind of coming towards you. We'll touch the wall with the sod, if you will. That'll keep an open impression there. But then we'll come in with just a little bed for planting. This will help us kind of mimic or balance the other side. And so this is a little pad of grass, if you will, where the homeowner or guests traveling around from the driveway side of the home. This will this side will be traffic more. It'll lead us right onto the deck. Well, let's put some lower plants at least in here to hide or seclude the bulkhead and have the grass roll right down here. Again, packing around the side and controlling erosion. And around the oak tree, well, just a little circular shaped bed or island with a few plants there. Now that'll be real easy to mow. I mean, it's kind of like a walkway pretty smooth in shape. We've installed some sod on the other side of the house. Let's look at that. It'll kind of show us uh, how things are shaping up. Whew, an extra windy day here. And now you know why we're staking these. We've added some East Palatka hollies, both left and right for privacy screening between the two homes. And can you see the sod? Staying away from the bulkhead, but enough in here just to control the drainage and the water that moves between the two homes. I just started drawing a few shapes or lines in here, you know, with this upper deck of the bulkhead area. We might start close to the house since it's a light color and use the lower pedalum here that certainly plays off the color of the house well, then we can step down with something green. Or like we mentioned, using the Aztec somewhere in here is going to be a pretty good thought. But taking the corner, I'm starting to round things off and develop, you know, a little opening. It could be a path or a low ground cover in here. So something weeping out behind me. And then even under the tree here, an accent plant that could be low and offer a little half circle presentation. I guess the big point is gonna be where the steps come into play here. What's the plant that's gonna uh, work with the stair stepping effect? And the lemongrass, I mean, that's one choice. It brings the, uh, the marsh in here. I like the way it looks against the bulkhead, but the lower pedlum looks better with the color of the brick or the block. So I don't know. And then we've got something green or glossy, a choice of that. Give us a moment, let's set some things up, and then we'll see how they develop. Well, after looking at the impact that the Laura Petalum provides the stairway or steps here, it's definitely the plan of choice. So we'll install these. I don't know if you can see the, the tile that's been set up here. We're gonna have the guys come back and put this border in, install it right around the perimeter there. And when it comes to this outlining of the edge on our patio, we've got the bulkhead and the edge of the patio. Well, uh, what do you do? Do you have a taller plant toward the patio and then a lower plant towards the wood bulkhead? In other words, do you taper down? Because looking from a view there, it, it ends the corner very nicely. Or do we want to do the reverse of that? I'm, again, I'm using two low plants by framing in the picture of the outside bulkhead with the taller plant or the Aztec grass and layering down lower toward the inside. We'll see, we wanna use the second choice. Here's why. We're using the taller plant as a border or a buffer. It hides the corner more and it also, again, finishes our eye going up rather than going down and we really wanna stop our attention so that you wouldn't want to walk out to the edge. It kind of holds you up and keeps you from your eye or your traffic, your point of impression moving in that direction. So it might, it might change due to the angle that it's seen the most often. But again, our choice is tall on the inside or taller on the outside. Now, I don't know if you recognize this plant from that distance. Osmanthus fragrance 
commonly known as tea olive. And so we're depending on a nice aroma or fragrance here from these plants and kind of a medium shrub. I've used them to break up a little bit of the wall, but notice we will not hedge this entire wall to hide it. We want to accent it a little bit. And so I've again redrawn the shape of the patio that needs to be extended. And so we've set up some things. I brought some Aztec grass over here. So we have it in one, two, three different locations for a little highlight. Dwarf Nandina there at the bulkhead. Then under the tree, let's stay low. Nothing big and bulky either. So a boxwood and the low juniper that'll look nice against the paving of the patio walk. So we've really got to wait to this point to get these installed. So we'll leave these plants in their buckets, really, so they can be moved and then relocated after the brick patio or pavers are installed. But we can begin to work on our landscape lighting. I thought I'd bring you down to the marsh's edge to look at what grows natural and what has naturalized in this area and kind of we want to use that concept. People talk about things that, that grow natural. I don't know if you can see in here the red tip grass. That is St. Augustine. For those of you in the south, you understand that this is one of the desired turf grasses that we use, but we rarely see it go unmowed. What does this tell us? Well, that St. Augustine grass is salt tolerant because this is the marsh, which is brackish water, and that unmowed, if it's left without the lawnmower touching it, it grows about 18 to 20 inches overall height, and that's it. Doesn't get any taller than that. Now, it's mixed in with this other grass, but I thought it was interesting to show that effect. So how can we take this kind of natural setting that we have with the marsh and these different type of grasses and even the palms and incorporate them or touch them to our formalized area? Uh, first of all, I wanted to kind of show you the difference between a palmetto, a low growing palm, and a cabbage palm. This cabbage palm will be what these other, you see, it just takes a while to develop a trunk on it. It might appear as a big base, but with time, the trunks become clear and the fronds kind of, as they're clipped, present that tr clear trunk canopy. Well, again, grass is here. And what we've tried to do, brought in the turf grass below here at the base, and I really like the bulkhead. I mean, with the wood, it's somewhat natural. Doesn't it look or feel somewhat natural that it ties into the grassy look here? And the lemongrass, again, we've used it to soften the corner, but to make an impression that we're bringing nature close to the deck itself. Now, as you continue on down to the left, we've used that grass also. And look what we've done here. The homeowner had some African iris that we brought into this little part of the area to blend it in, which we usually normally use close to the house, into the natural setting, and it works really well. Here again, our goal or our concept was to use the grasses that we've brought in as a softening aspect here. The lemongrass, again, repeated, does that very well. And then also, do you notice the yellow hue here with the yellow hue of the pine on the bulkhead. They kind of tie together really well. I really like the upper deck. We've used grass in here, but a pathway. So we've left an open path here so you could come in here and work the beds to clip or prune the shrubs or make any adjustments needed. And then even for a pathway, I mean, you could cheat through here instead of having to come all the way around the bottom. Remember, as regard to the pathway, we talked that we could shut off the interest here or leave it open. Now, I wonder, if you were the homeowners, would you put a little stair or a step here to have that for extra accessibility? I like the way once things are installed, we get the mulch in, uh, it just looks better. Even the steps, I mean, architecturally speaking, curved or rounded steps work just as well. Friends, you know, landscape lighting has come a long way. We really want to bring you up to speed and let you know that there are different grades and quality products out there. Now, this is a contractor grade, and the homeowners as well as the project really warrant that. And even beginning with the, the controller, 
It's on a photo cell, but it has an interior timer so that you can set it to come on when it turns dark with the photo cell and then set or determine the amount of time that you want it to run. Long days or short days, that can even be adjusted. So basically, we have two little types of feelings. An uplight, whether that's for trees or the architecture of the home or walls or panels, whatever, and then downlighting. Now the other combination is that the ver variety that's built into the wattage of the lamp. Some may be hotter, draw more wattage, some may be softer, so that creates a mood, if you will. For our uplighting, we'll use three different fixture, fixtures here. This is considered a wall lamp, but it can go for trees also. This is a 50 watt bulb in here, so it's quite intense or bright. Now, that also lets you light further up a wall or a tree like in this, like this specimen here, the heliocarpus, where the trunk canopy is further extended from the ground even. Well, next, this copper fixture, again, can be used as a 20 watt bulb to light up, again, anything that we want to go up in a fashion. These, this can be taken off and even applied or this other attachment to trees or poles to create some downlighting effects also. So it's kind of versatile there. And finally, the power lighter is used, again, to primarily light walls where we need to flood a large amount of uh, highlight onto a, a certain subject, but even for trees too. So these are our three uplighting fixtures that we'll use in a combination or a varieties of ways. Now, what about that down lighting or path lighting? So we've used a bell lamp here and here to achieve some pathway lighting onto the upper deck of the landing and then to even encroach and show off the steps for safety or security at night. Another bell lamp here, these will marry kind of together and again highlight the steps with a soft, a soft wattage. And then this is called a foot lamp. We'll use this type fixture to blow a piece of light in a circular pattern onto the pathway as well as over the bulkhead and then again here in a circular fashion there. So when it all comes together, I can't wait to show it to you. Uh, that was great. Now, all we need to do is allow time for the homeowners to enjoy it. I'm Gary Allen for the Designer's Landscape, and I'll see you on the next project.
So long.